Welcome to the Light Conversations, a series about healing, well being, and creativity. I'm your host, Jada Del Drago, AKA Yo Jada. During this unprecedented time of global pandemic and national lockdowns, I decided to reach out mainly to healers, but also to therapists, artists, creatives, writers, thinkers experts in their field all around the world to discuss what they're experiencing personally at this time and which practices they would recommend to incorporate well-being or creativity into daily life. Today, I'm speaking with Christina Block. Christina is a performance artist, embodiment alchemist, and founder of Authentic Embodiment a conscious movement modality focused on realigning one realigning one's body mind soul and spirit into the wholeness of one's being christina has expressed her artistry through performance dance visual art and movement facilitation all over the world from burning man to lightning in a bottle eclipse festival beloved festival envision festival chosen punta mona dance lab new york city and many others as well as various private events women's circles and retreats her captivating dance performances keep the audience enraptured with a deep sense of connection to the complete spectrum of her feelings and emotions Christina believes in the transformational power of dance and encourages everyone to fully embody their authentic, sensual, powerful self. So it's a great pleasure to check in with her today and see how she's doing at this time. You came on. So here Perfect. I am with Christina Block. It's so wonderful to um, connect with you in this way today. How are you and where in the world are you at the moment? Hi, dear. It's nice to see you virtually. And I am in Los Angeles currently. My husband and I moved in LA actually two weeks ago. We used to live in Boulder and before that in New York. So we made a move during this crazy wild uh, time that we're all in right now and we moved into a community living space to develop this project uh, with our friends and it's a beautiful beautiful land in Topanga Canyon in Los Angeles and it's been quite an intense transition um, and there's a lot it was a lot of work put into building pretty much a house from scratch there were just there's like a box not livable box and we moved in and and built everything ourselves and created design and and brought our furniture from our apartment in new york it, like it, it was a lot of work so we're finally feeling that we're settled in Amazing. And was that um, like a, pro a group project to create, to turn that box it is home? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So my husband and I and our friend Danny, who is part of uh, my husband's music band. Uh, so they're both artists. We're, we're old artists here. So we're <laughs> discovering new new skills like how to do yard work and carpentry <laughs> and decor and stuff like that so <laughs> it's it's great because we're like expanding our our skill sets yeah <laughs> during well, this time. i love that because basically if you have a group of creative people you can throw anything at them and you will totally. find solutions and probably yeah. radically uh, like innovative ways of doing things that maybe a carpenter wouldn't do, but you would do it in a different way. So that's really beautiful. Totally. So you've basically created an artistic community in Topanga Canyon. I love it. That's a, a very way, a very cool way to be productive during this lockdown. So what is your day? Do you have a routine, like a daily routine or what is a typical day like for you at the moment? <sighs> At the moment, well, I, I always have my daily morning practice, which is a no negotiable, like whatever, whatever I do, whatever I do. 
Can you hear me now? Yes, you're back. Awesome. Okay, perfect. So a no negotiable. Um, yeah, it. it's a no negotiable. It's my, it's like going to church for me. So I start my day with uh, a yoga practice and then a meditation. I'm a Vipassana uh, practitioner. So I sit for an hour. I try to sit for an hour every day. Uh, now that we're, we're moved into a new space and it, it takes a lot of time to, to, to work on the space. I kind of slipped out of my practice a little bit, but I'm committed to go back to it. And I mean, that's, that's how it goes, right? With, with practices, you were, the, the commitment is there, but sometimes there are uh, circumstances where we can, and it is like we can just not be that consistent with our practice and it's okay um we always can go back to it for sure let's just talk about vipassana for a second because a lot of people listening will know exactly what that is but there are probably going to be many who may have heard that word but not know exactly what that is and that yeah. so it's also interesting to hear you say that that's part of your practice because some might under think that that's just something you do in a two week retreat, but for you, it's beyond. So maybe if you want to say what yeah. asana is and how that's become your practice too. Totally. Yeah. Well, in other words, Vipassana is inside meditation. Uh, it's a silent meditation um, where you sit for one hour and you simply observe reality as it is by focusing your attention on, um, on the area around uh, the nose and, and nostrils and uh, observing how the breath is coming in and out and, and then scanning the body and observing sensations in our body. So with, with doing that, we, we're just constantly coming back into the present moment and being with what actually is rather than uh, following our mind stories. And our mind is always thinking, is always busy, is always there uh, doing its own thing. So by bringing our attention back to our breath and sensations in the body, we come back to the present moment. And the big thing about vipassana uh, you realize uh, that uh, since we are so uh, attached to being in the mind um, our mind constantly either craves things or um, there is an aversion to things so and we like this pendulum right and through this practice we learn how not to be attached to to either clinging nor aversion so that that's the basic of it okay awesome. it's it's, it's very simple very powerful not easy to do because it's like the, the simplest thing to sit qu quietly for an hour is not an easy thing to do <laughs> because the mind is so it's so wild and um, will create so many excuses for not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Beautiful. So after you've done your morning Vipassana on most days, you're teaching a course right now, aren't you? I do teach a course. Yeah. I facilitate a conscious movement modality called authentic embodiment. I created it about a couple years ago and now I'm teaching a course um, called Movement to Wholeness, where we go through seven energy centers. Uh, you also know them as chakras. And this comes from Indian uh, yog yogic tradition. And we have seven energy centers in our body. By bringing our attention to those centers, we can see whether the energy is balanced or out of balance and through different practices we can uh, bring harmony into those centers so that we uh, 
feel peaceful and aligned with who we truly are, aligned with our purpose and, and be embodied uh, because the, the practice that I teach is, is all about movement and embodiment and conscious dance. Um, like that, like that, that's the most enjoyable way of, of meditating for me personally. <laughs> and through, uh, through moving our bodies, we, we get to know ourselves deeper, um, and, uh, getting more can't hear you. Um, oh, it was so good. Okay. Um, I think you were just saying through moving, we get to know ourselves mm -hmm. deeper. There you are. You're back. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Through movement, we get to know ourselves deeper uh, because we are, um, again, like we're coming back into the present moment and we're staying with what's present in our body. And there's a lot of things that are happening and it's mostly energy moving through us. So by moving with that energy, we, first of all, we, we, we open up some uh, blockages and if there's any stagnancy that, uh, that appears as, as physical pain or, uh, some tension in our body or if there's any emotions that we suppress that can also manifest as as a as tension in our body so by moving our body we we move the energy we unblock and unlock those uh, tensions that pain and we feel just more more joyful more expressed more embodied and uh, we move through this life uh, in connection with our body and with the wisdom uh, that is inside of our body. I love that. So can you give me a simple definition of what embodiment means to you? Hmm. Embodiment means to me is, is that the spirit that we actually are is is fully uh, felt in this human body it's the it's it, it's the energy uh of it, it's the energy that is flowing through our body and we can feel that on on a sense on, on a level of sensations and <sighs> Embodiment is also um, the the presence that we that we get to experience of of like the, the presence of um, of the of of the spirit, the presence of the soul, and and also uh, the experience of the present moment uh, of ourselves every single moment and an authentic embodiment is is uh is being with what is present again in the moment so it's 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 always coming back to the present moment basically and and being uh being with what is whether that an emotion or a relationship that we're in or uh, a project that we are creating so it's it's a very it's a somatic experience it's the, it, it is a body experience um, of, of who we are and what we're here to create beautiful I mean you know, on one level it sounds so poetic and on another it's like it's so real and so true and what you're expressing like I feel like I've I've heard sort of reflections of that idea from the great lamas to people like Eckhart Tolle and and what you're saying about being present in the moment on one hand sounds 
quite simple, but is actually so difficult for most of us to actually come into yeah. presence. And what I'm hearing you say is like, by really focusing on the body is a, is a wonderful gateway to come into presence. Totally. And um, is movement a part of your daily practice as well? Is that something you do every day? Yes, yes. I dance every day um, for sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's a, it's 15, sometimes it's an hour. It really depends if I have time. And I also have an intention to, to go into the practice and, and work on something. Like, for example, um, if if I experience like if like the other day I was experiencing some confusion and and doubt and I felt really uh, kind of disconnected from the whole world and was internally going through some um, I was going through some doubt it was I was going through some existential crisis to be honest like also this full moon is so powerful and that brought up a lot for me to to look at and to face and i felt i felt sad i felt a lot of anger was coming up and that and like one of the most beautiful way to to move with 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 all of that is through it is through dance for me so i went into a dance session and uh like i jumped i breathed uh i i screamed and cried and i punched a pillow and it just really allowed myself to 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 move to be with that energy because when when we don't allow any of the energy to move any of the emotions to move then then it's like it, it gets stuck in us <laughs> and um, and it creates more and more disconnection from ourselves and from from the world yeah. and our our uh, family and, and friends well speaking of disconnection from the world what's your situation there are you all like we here are in a kind of lockdown now for seven weeks where we're not we're, we're in pods whoever you're in your home with you're stuck with now for seven yeah. weeks and yeah happening in yeah. we, we are we are very very blessed to be in this community space right now i think there are um about uh 20 people in total who who live on this land it's a big land and but we all have our own space and um but but places are still closed i go do grocery shopping like once a week and actually we went to the beach the other day we found one open beach Nice. Uh, which is not in LA, oh. but in in Ventura. So we had a, a moment of sitting by the ocean, and I jumped into cold water. Like I don't really care right now. Okay. I'm going in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So and I heard that um, yesterday. I went to see a dentist. There was kind of an emergency. I was very very lucky to find one. And this woman told me that next week, officially and legally, uh, they will be open. So I think I think things slowly are going to um, progress into coming back to. It's not. I don't think it's going to be a normal way of living, and it's not going to be the way we used to live. It's going to be something new and. I have no idea how it's going to look like, but I'm happy to know that things slowly go into unravel and unlock. Right. That does sound really positive. Are you, have you experimented with women's circles? Because I know that's a big part of what you do as well. Have you, have you experimented with doing an online women's circle? Uh, I have, you know, I haven't hosted 
a virtual online circle because I am focusing on the online program right now. Right. And we do have weekly calls with women. So it, it feels like a women's circle every week, but it's with a certain group of women uh, within the program. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some women's circles that will be open to an extended uh, community for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds, maybe maybe later in June. It feels a little bit like we've fast tracked into the future. <laughs> like now we are definitely in the future. It's like how suddenly we just zip. Everyone's shut inside. Everyone's having a kind of um, conscious evolution, and now we are in the future. Mm -hmm. That's sort of what it feels to me like a little bit. Um, but uh, is there anything you want people to know about the work you do other than, you know, defining the authentic embodiment? Is there anything you'd really like people to know about it? Um, yeah, I, I would like to share and show the masks that I create. Oh, yes, please. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. We haven't talked about that. Yeah. So I, uh, about... Two years, two years ago, I created my first mask for my dance performances. Um, and that was the beginning of this mystical journey that I am on right now. And uh, this is the first mask that I painted. Oh, it's beautiful. And so, each mask has an archetype and ha that archetype carries a certain energy and what archetype is is basically um, the archetypes there in our collective uh, consciousness so those are like our guides I see them as our teachers and our guides and um, even even like angels because they are here to uh, to teach us and 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 show us the way and they carry certain qualities that we can relate to and and see if that's something that we are either wanting to um, to strengthen in ourselves um, or whether uh, th there could be something that we that we don't resonate with and um or maybe there is something in us uh that we want to grow out of and and become uh, a more empowered authentic human being so with working with this masks we can look into both like the light and the shadow aspects of of who we are and uh, by by the light and shadow aspect, I mean like the light is something that that is uh, like powerful about you. Yeah, there are some qualities that um, um, that bring you to to a more empowered way of living and. And a shadow aspect of you is uh, it's something that you rejected in yourself, something that you judged about yourself. And, and when we do that, uh, then parts of ourself are, um, are, not, are not being integrated. So with, with doing the work with archetypal masks, we, we, we bring into we bring all these different pieces, all these forgotten pieces of ourselves back so that we feel whole. Um, and, and we, so by embodying the, uh, an archetype, we um, kind of expand the color palette of, of who we are. I like that. So, which archetype is the first? Is that mask you just showed us? So this 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 first one is the innocent child. Beautiful. And um, so this archetype is has the energy of uh, of hope and joy and playfulness and the desire to to go and explore and and have fun 
and it's just that that innocence that um that original innocence that we all carry within ourselves when we are uh, small, you know, that we are open to the whole world and we are um, like absorbing information and learning and and not afraid to to make mistakes and and we're playful. So this is the energy of um, of moving through life as as an innocent child. Uh, with our eyes open, with our heart open, to go and explore and expand. And and this is another mask that I just, uh, this is the latest, the recently I, I created it, has actually a similar energy to it, and this one is called The Wise Fool. Ah, yes, I saw you just did some kind of like online, uh, you were part of an online um Cabaret, is that right? Is that yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That so, is so beautiful. I guess if people are listening and they're not seeing, this is it's gold and and red. I mean, it looks it's powerful. Golden, yeah. So why yeah. is it powerful then? I just want to say for a second, I love that you began with the innocent child and that that became a key to unlock like a huge path for you with the mm -hmm. archetypes and the masks and everything. Mm -hmm. so I love that. Mm -hmm. The one you just showed as well, the wise fool, like embodying the I know nothing kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So the wise the wise fool it actually knows everything. Yeah. And also and sees through everything, but it also has the energy of the innocent child. Because if we look into the archetypal journey, and there is twelve main archetypes, and the journey starts with the innocent child and ends with the wise fool. So when we do this uh, circle, like like we we go back. So the wise fool carries the energy of the innocent child within itself, but it's a, there's so much wisdom in that archetype as well. And it's just not 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 taking ourselves too seriously. You know, when we have so much knowledge, we can like get into our minds again and 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 overthink things <laughs> yeah that's a really good message um so are there any other masks you want to show do you have another favorite or do you feel like the innocent child and the wise fool are really complimentary i brought this this two and then i have another one um so it's a great. really it. this one is really really beautiful too yeah. i mean all of all, all of them are Beautiful. All of them are beautiful. All of them are beautiful. All of them have. One? Um, this one is the starborn creator, and I believe that every one of us is a creator. Uh, we all have. Uh, we all exude creativity in one way or another, and it's like I just want to break uh, the belief that. Uh, that we are not creative and if you think about yourself that you are not creative this is not true because that's that's the the fundamental energy that we all carry and especially um i mean both men and women but if we uh when i work with women specifically our creativity is is uh, being born from our uh, second energy center, our womb space. Yeah, that's where we literally create babies and, <laughs> and create projects and, and, other, um, and other creative things in life. So whether you are an artist or not, you can be creative in so many different ways. And, and this archetype just encourages us to, 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 to again to believe in our creativity to reconnect and reignite our cre creativity i love that that's a really nice reminder that we are all capable of being creative i think that's a really wonderful message for myself and anyone else to hear today so thank you for that and uh, if people want to learn more about the archetypes and the masks would that be a part of the course that you're doing you know, that's a very good question. So the program that I'm running right now 
um, we don't work with archetypes, but I've been feeling a strong call to create a new offering where we will be working with archetypes specifically. So stay tuned about that. Um, I will go on that journey. It might take me a little bit of time to create the offering, but it's it's been brewing inside of me. I can feel that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I hear a lot of expertise flowing from you when you talk about these archetypes because on one hand you're explaining the archetypes, but you're actually somehow communicating a lot of wisdom and uh, within the story of the archetype. There's a lot of information there that's very helpful. So I look forward to hearing more about that. Is there anything else that you're looking forward to? um in the near future or beyond um when the lockdown ends or any creative offerings coming up for you yeah i'm looking forward to the time when we can gather again and we can feel each other close and we can give hugs and we're not afraid to give hugs you know i encourage i encourage all of us to to really get into the mindset that we are resilient, that we're healthy, that we're well, and to take action to take care of our bodies, to, to strengthen our immune systems, to, um, to move, to dance, to, to be active, to, to spend time in nature, and to take care of, of nature as well, yeah? So I think that, one of the greatest lessons that I'm learning, and, and I hope the whole world is learning too, that we, it's really our responsibility to take care of the earth and, and find more regenerative, sustainable ways of, of living in harmony with each other, with ourselves. And um, again, looking forward to, to be in physical spaces together and to, to share the work of, of movement and, and masks and uh, art and performance and just, yeah, put together beautiful experiences as we used to do. <laughs> do you think yeah. we'll be doing them, do you think anything will be different in the way we do things after this experience? I really don't know. I, there, there will be, I think there will be, what, what I see happening right now and people will probably be more a little bit cautious of like coming back to, to the world and, and, and gathering in spaces. And as I said, we like, we can take all like we can follow the protocols of washing our hands and <laughs> doing all the things but at the same time it's I, I feel it's more it's really really important like, what mindset we're we're in and <clears throat> what we believe in if if i if i truly believe that i'm resilient and and i'm welcoming uh and I'm welcoming connection into my life. Uh, and also I, I, I take all the actions to, to take care of my own body, then we will be fine. <laughs> we'll be totally fine. I love that. It's been so good to check in with you with this golden halo of light around your head and to see the beautiful masks you're creating and get a, a deeper understanding of the work you're doing and, um, I really look forward to signing up and joining you on one of your um, forthcoming offerings. I need to move more. So this conversation is reminding me of ways to do that. Thank you so much. It's really, really good to see you um, and to check in with you and hear you and loving the journey that you're on. Um, it's beautiful you. to do this. Thank you so much for having me.